Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one we've got a 2003 um, Kung Fu hamster produced by Jemmy. I'll put the uh, eBay description here uh, and it basically just said it suddenly stopped working could be a loose wire they don't really know it's supposed to sing um, Kung Fu fighting and spin its shield round and I think there's another version where it has like a um, uh, a nunchuck it kind of extends and spins it round so it'll be interesting to see what the shield one does because I couldn't find a video of that so here we go this is my first look as you can see so here we go Kung Fu hamster three AAA batteries by Jemmy try me press my left hand so to operate it we're gonna yeah, there's a switch I think in there somewhere oh yeah so there's a, a little push button in here uh, don't be fooled by this little hamster's size. He's a master of martial arts. Whilst the song Kung Fu Fighting plays, he'll mystify you with his uh, meticulous moves. Move over, Karate Kid. Watch out, Bruce Lee. This little rodent's heading to your town. And yeah, that's just about putting the three batteries in. Same on there. So that's pretty good. It's nice to have the box. We'll take him out. It's even got a little try me thing there, so when it's on display, that kind of just sits and points to the hand. Well, that's pretty good. So here's our cute little ham kung fu hamster. Pretty sweet with that shield, I guess, that's supposed to spin round on some kind of spindle or something. Uh, still got the some kind of price tag on here, though. I'll probably cut that off. Uh, is uh, kung fu bandana just about holding on with the label there that we can see this is not to be removed until delivered to the customer so it's designed to come off but we'll probably leave that on and at the bottom jemmy industries corp so let's have a look inside what we expect oh we're gonna probably not the first person to try and open it up straight away because there's a small crack just there but what we'll do is we'll stick some batteries in and see what happens. If it suddenly stopped working, it is likely just going, and, the, and there's no sign of contact damage, it is likely going to be a, a cable on the inside, a, a wire that's become disconnected, but it could be anything. So, yeah, so as we can see, these contacts are all absolutely fine. And then what looks to be a very, possibly a speaker at the bottom, yeah, that would make sense with the grill there. There's just a a small flat plastic speaker. Uh, I think I've got three AAAs to hand. Right, I wonder if you, when you put it in, you're supposed to get anything, Pro possibly not. And then yeah, as we push the switch, there's no life there. Just roll in the batteries, nothing at all. So no, that's about as far as I can diagnose at this stage. Uh, so hopefully this isn't going to be as tricky as the um, the George W. Bush one. If you've not seen that one, it took hours and hours and it was an absolute nightmare getting all the way inside. This one's much smaller. Uh, the mechanism I, I'm hoping is going to be a lot simpler, um, but it might be the same thing where we've got to go hunting for screws. So what we've got to do now is get inside and kind of remove all of this section. There'll be parts that run inside here. There'll be parts that run inside there. Um, so it's either a case of you know, lifting all of this up to find the screws, which is likely going to be in the in the back or somewhere. And you can see there's a little cable tie there. So what I'll try and do is without damaging the cable tie or losing it, we'll try and open that up. And hopefully that will allow us to at least slide something up. I don't think on this one, there's any point in cutting any clothing off. So that's going to be our first port of call. Port of call? Port of call? It's proving really tricky to get into there. So what I'm going to just have to do is snip it off and then I can always thread another clear one through at the end. So I won't go too far. I'm just going to go this far. No point trying to get into this, the arms, etc. Because uh, here I'm going to take the back off, and, and hopefully it will just be a, 
a cable in here somewhere. No screw in there unusually. So I wonder if anyone's been in and then just put a cable tie in because it seems weird that there'd only be three screws in the four holes, but there you go. Okay, so we're into here now. So the power I can see. Wonder actually if we can probably just get round to the front as well now. Very similar to the um, the George Bush one. Seems to need a little bit more persuasion. Seems to be a bit of glue or something just keeping it in place. Can't see anything holding it on here, so it's just got to be a piece of a little bit of like glue or something just on the on the inner edge. Just trying to get it off without damaging it. You can definitely see it's stuck on. Just does not want to budge. Yeah, you can see that was just stuck on there. Okay, so power-wise, cable here, cable here. Let's just put some bench power into it. The uh, four and a half volts, won't it? So is it power or is it uh, the switch? That's the question. Kind of follow the power. I don't know we get the board off. Is that literally just glued on? It is. So what I'll do is I'll put the power in and then see if it's getting to the board. So we're doing that. You can see we're getting power in, and also as I just shorted something, the motors are working. So that means probably that it's not, it's probably going to be the switch. I guess in theory you could cut that wire and then put it together and that would tell us if the switch was working or not without having to get all the way in. Let's see where it is there. Oh, it's only there. Right, so this is supposed to be our switch. I guess let's see if we can short the switch and then we can identify whether it's a a switch problem or that. There's a switch. Okay, so that shows us there's probably a problem with this switch. So we need to fix that to start with. And then equally, the, the motor was making a noise, but this wasn't spinning. So I'm guessing, I don't know, it's supposed to probably like move like this. And then also the shield wasn't spinning either. So, I mean, that might just be because it's not on properly. But I guess let's work on the switch first. So for this, but is, there, is it coming all the way off? I mean, that's the only snag there is getting that shield off. It's literally, the shield is the only thing holding the rest of its body in. So I think I think I want I, I do want to do that because it will. I've got to go that way anyway, haven't I? I mean, if I pull from here, and then I can. But I don't even need to worry. I can keep I can keep the shield. I'll go with the state of that now. I can keep the shield in its position actually, because all I want to know is is this spinning. Okay, so here's our hamster. We know that this should probably be moving like this, which means that it's going to be a broken cog inside there. This is turning, which is good. So that should be spinning our shield. Um, probably just needs uh, fettling a little bit. So. 
first thing I'll do is have a look at this switch. So that's going to need taking off, uh, cleaning, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to just replace it with another push button one. Get it off and then I'll heat up the soldering iron to, to remove the legs. I might be talking out my bum. I'm pretty sure you can use continuity to check whether a switch is working or not. So you can kind of see if it's, you can attach and then push the button and yes, yeah, so in theory, there should be continuity there now, but there, there isn't. So what I'm going to try and do is clean it out. Um, with these, they're pretty self-contained. You can kind of like pry the lids off, I think, and then get some uh, cleaning fluid in there. That's the lid of the switch off just there. It's tiny, I don't know if you can see that at all. And then I'm just gonna clean up inside this bit underneath the, uh, the copper disc that's inside. Now if this works, I'll just super glue around the edge just to hold that uh, in place. But let's try that continuity check again and see if we, anything if that's made any difference at all. There we go. So we have continuity, which is good. So that's a switch fix. So what I'm going to do is just gently press, make sure that's pressed in place, and then just pop some glue. I'm going to use the this super glue precision power gel stuff with the precision nozzle. What we'll do, we'll re-solder it in. Hopefully when we push the button, it will come to life and then we can start moving on to having a look at the, uh, the, the cogs inside the motor. I'm just gonna use my extra pair of hands. Right, now fingers crossed, we push the button and it should fire up. Place your bets. Oh, you can actually turn it on and off. Great. So that's our power working. And this works as well. So the spinning stuff will sort out in a minute. But I want, I'm pretty sure we should be seeing something like this going on. So I'm going to have a look inside here and see if there's a broken cog. So that holds the base down and then there's another three inside here. Right, we're in. So we have our motor this one and this one so it's a case of checking them all for cracks i think we might have a crack here part of me still thinks it's something to do with the cracked cog on here and that's why it's and that's why it's jumping but to get a spare like one of those i'll have a look i do have a cog bag but I don't expect to have one of those. I mean, that's very similar. It's just not as raised up. I mean, if I can push this out and push this one on, it might be worth a chance. Now, interestingly, that actually came off this one on the top. So if this one doesn't work, there's a potential that we might be able to just put a, um, another one of these on top of that and kind of secure it in place. I don't know what it is with these flipping builds. The uh, This one's making me uh, bleed my own blood as well. So what I resorted to doing is putting uh, my, I don't know what you call it, hole maker. It's for, like put a pilot hole in and then I banged it in with this hammer just to kind of manually stretch it out. So now I'm going to rebuild it with the other cog and just see if, see what we get basically.
It doesn't seem that much better than it was before. But equally it doesn't seem any worse, so that's that's a positive, isn't it? Right, something on there. Uh, that's like notching. Let's see if we can get that uh, initial small cog out. I wonder if this one's broken as well. Uh, look, we've got a crack in this one as well. So that needs replaced. So this one out, this one in. Bit better look we're getting we're getting moving both ways now okay you return many minutes later uh, i'm just about to screw the bottom on here so basically i've had a look online and really the hamster's just kind of doing that it's just kind of doing a little shuffle its arms are hardly moving and then uh, obviously this the shield's spinning on here so i'm happy that it's just doing that small amount of movement uh, and so i'm gonna screw it all into place now so this, this we're just expecting to, to, to spin round because it's going to be attached on the end there. So it was nice and tight. So I think what I'll do is I'll literally just, yeah, I think I'll just attach that back on. So I'm going to, I need to get this glued back in place here and then I'll put this foam over the top. So to do that, I'll uh, hot glue gun, I think, although it takes a while. I don't need to, but I'm just going to put a little blob here at the rear as well. And that mount might seem counterintuitive, but it might just stop those two wires at any point if someone's a little bit overzealous pushing the button or squeezing around the area. Last thing we want is those two to short. Time to rebuild the bod. No, yeah, do we re rebuild the body now, don't we? Yeah. So. That crack when I took it apart is actually helping me now because it's helping me line up with where exactly it should be. Right, it's time to get our creature open. See if his shield works. You rejoin me. I've just been um, basically the cable, t the double cable tie didn't really work. This one, so I've just pulled it out and put a, a black one in instead and just putting these uh, rubber feet back on in the battery bay and then I'll clear the decks and we should be ready for a demo and here we are at the end uh, it fought me it made me bleed it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take but we got there in the end and um, basically it involved opening it up slowly but surely taking it apart I had to get down to that switch, open the switch up, clean it out, fix the switch, put that back together, um, find this thing, just make sure I knew how um, how this worked, how it spun. Then I had to go deeper and deeper inside. I found two broken cogs. So I threw, one was a like for like replacement, the other one I had to open out the hole and put the other one in, finesse and finesse and finesse until I finally got the cogs working. Then I rebuilt it, just put in a table tie here at the end. Um, there's a couple of marks here just from the entry on the way in but other than that you know the condition if it's sat there is basically um as good as when it arrived just a quick clean up for the box um one thing i find is um like i don't think he's supposed to punch like that and um depending on how tight his clothes are he'll either move a little bit or not not uh, not much at all so i find if you if you've had him sat for a little bit you just move the arms just to kind of make sure that the fabric's loose make sure the hand is pulled back from here and then all being well when you push the button just located here behind the hand
I think I'll be hearing that song in my dreams tonight, or should I say nightmares. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you want to own this guy or any of the other items that are featured, check out the uh, links in my description. And until the next one, all the best, take care and see ya.